Hey everyone, Pinchy Al here, and we're back with another episode. And on today's episode, we are replacing Pappy the Bus, rear and front shocks. Uh, why? Well, if you guys want to see, this is the rear shock, and it doesn't even want to move up. I compressed it, and it's now just stuck there. That's why. So, let's get to work, because this is Pinchy Al's Garage. Now, from what I've done already, I've replaced the one rear shock. I replaced the rear passenger side, and it's very, very straightforward. You can actually do this without the wheel removed. Um, with the wheel removed, you just have easier access, but it's really up to you. You just got to make sure the, the suspension or the, uh, the car is off the ground. The wheels cannot be touching the ground. You want to make sure that the shocks are decompressed as much as possible. Uh, that way the bolts aren't under tension and they're easy to remove. So you have bolt up top and on the bottom. Um, they use from what I have on this car and I will show you. So I needed three different sockets to do the job in the rear. Uh, 19, 17 and a 21. Um, Let me actually, you know, you know what? Correction a 19 and a 17. That's all I needed. Just a 19 and 17. The 17, I needed for the lower shock, for the nut on the, on the shock, and the 19 for the actual bolt itself on top and bottom. Pretty much remove them. Nothing should fall. This is a torsion beam setup. So when this is decompressed all the way, it's done. It's not going to have any pushback on you. It'll just stay there. So you unbolt it, pop the other one in, and that's it. So I'll give you an example of what's going on here. So you guys can see what uh, I have a, my current problem. <laughs> this is a front shock, okay? This is a rear shock. This is a rear shock. You see the problem here? All right, we're back. So now that we've installed this side, you know, I already, you know, I didn't show you guys the install, but we're gonna do it on the, on the other side of the car. We're gonna install the rear shock to show you how simple it is. And then pretty much you tighten them down, torque them to spec and call it done. So let's get to work. So we're gonna get this wheel off right here. Sorry about that guys, it dropped you. Okay, so now we have access to the rear shock. Now you're gonna need a 19 for the top and a 19 for the bottom with a 17 um, to hold a nut in place, which yeah, it worked out. So 17, 19, and then the top is a 19. So what I did is that I ended up breaking loose the nut first if I can. This one's a lot closer to this side, actually. Oh, wow. That's really loose. So what I'm gonna do is, that, that nut is just spinning. That's not good. Good thing I'm replacing these G's. That came right off. Okay, so the nut assembly is washer, lock washer, thread it through. Then in between the lock washer and the shock is right here to lock that in place. And then the nut itself on the end right here. 
like that. So that should be your assembly. So spindle, shock, that. Okay, guys? I'm going to be surprised if this just pops off. I wouldn't be surprised. Just right off. Look at that. Isn't that ridiculous? Okay, same thing. And see here, washer, lock washer, washer, lock washer, just like that. Okay. And see how bad this shock is. Now it's supposed to come right back up. <laughs> it's barely even moving. It's moving though. Yeah, these things, these things are done. I don't know how old these things are, but they're done, though. So we are using KYB gas shocks, and these are gas uh, adjust shocks. So these pretty much are much stiffer than your standard oil-filled ones. Um, but your added benefit is rough terrain, um, not so good, but smooth roads with turns, much better. Less body roll with the shock, better control on your turns. Obviously, I'm not gonna be freaking doing crazy turns on this, but it's just a better feel when you start doing some turns where the car actually rebounds back correctly instead of like feel, having it feel like you're falling over, you know? So what I'm gonna do is install this with the strap already on it, and I'll show you why, because I had the other issue when I was working on this. All right, so I just threaded in the uh, the bolt on top nice and slow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break loose this guy, hold constant pressure, and then as it's coming down, keep pressure on it, feed it through. You'll get it right now, but that's kind of like the idea. Hopefully I can push it through, because it was a pain to push this sucker back up. So I got the, the bolt pretty much all the way flush here. Pretty much I'm just gonna smack it. I'm gonna smack it in. And get this guy nice and hand tight. All the way to the end. And then torque everything to spec. You guys can see. Try to block the sun here. There's the other one on top. Hand thread these things. You don't want this thing to cross thread on you, all right, guys? These things are old, so you know this is almost 50, this is a 50 plus year old car, so things are gonna be a little wonky. But this is made German steel, so stuff will last forever. But just make sure you know you hand thread everything, okay? All right. So now we're on the passenger side front so we got a bolt here let me get you guys closer get you guys up there there we go so we got a bolt here and then one down here and both of them pretty much go into up oh, this one has a nut on the back so this one is all the way through and then the bottom one has a nut that just goes in so it kind of reversed like the rear where the top went all the way and bolted in and the bottom had a nut and a bolt so the top is a 17 and the bottom one is a 19 on this setup. I don't know. Again, because of the age of the car, it could be very different on, on other guys' cars. Maybe you guys swapped the bolts out. I don't know. But currently in my setup, that's what it is. All right. So I just learned that <laughs> the shock actually bolts onto like a stub, little little stub axle. And I'll show you guys. So you guys can see here what I mean. This little stub sticking out of here. That's what it bolts onto. And then up here, 
There's a you have the there's a nut and wash uh, lock washer on the back, and just go all the way through. Pretty straightforward. Did, didn't not much effort at all. I can show you. This is the front shock, and this is fully pretty much decompressed. I'm gonna push down on it, nice and slow. Comes up nice and slow. This one. Doesn't even come out. That's how all these things are. Definitely due for a replacement. All right, let's swap it out. So what I'm gonna do is slide the bottom one in to the stub first. You guys hear me good? Okay. And this one just has a lock washer. Ooh, and a nut. And I can already see a problem with this one. This is not the right shock. These need the space in between them to fit correctly. So you'll see here the um, shock that I have has this grommet that sticks out further so it actually locks with the nut. This one does not have that little piece that sticks out. And it sticks out like another 10-15 millimeters you'll see here just like that. Um, sorry for that on the uh, video but I'm gonna cut into this really quick so in the box, the uh, little uh, spacers that are actually supposed to go on the shock, they were like taped in the box, which was kind of weird. I'm thinking I think the tape fell off and might have just stuck itself in the box because it didn't come out with the actual shock. So as a heads up, double check your box, reinstall the process, and then pretty much straightforward, then you're done. There's not much else to it. Just make sure you torque it down to spec. Um, I believe these go down to about like 44, 50 pounds on the top and bottom bolt. So don't quote me on that. I would double check online. Um, again, it's really, it's such a really old car. I would be careful not to target too much because you can end up snapping those bolts and then end up replacing them with some other ones that you probably have to shop online for. You'd probably go to Home Depot for them. But double check your box. The spacer will be in there. I end up finding them and then reinstalling everything right away and got the car back on the road. All right, just a heads up, peeps. Well, unfortunately, that kind of concludes our DIY for today. That sucks. I cannot finish this until I get the right parts in stock. So, again, but at least you guys understand what's needed for the top and bottom very straightforward and not much else to do do that torque spec it and you're done um i'm gonna have to wait until later to finish it well either way thanks for tuning in on this episode of pinch Alice garage with pappy the bus sucks i couldn't finish it the way i wanted to but you know what it's just another another day for another diy right <laughs> all right either way peace out everyone you guys have yourself a wonderful day and as always here at pinch house garage we're gonna break we're gonna fix and we'll repeat deuces